All right, what's going on guys? This is Rob and we are back with the Power Rangers. Yes, we are. And in this video, we're picking up from not the last video, but the video before that, where Billy the Blue Ranger was about to surrender to Lord Draken in this dark alternate reality, right? I don't remember what, what we called it in the video before this video, but regardless, we'll just call it the dark alternate reality. <laughs> That's the easier name to call it. But what we actually end up getting here is a kind of jumping back and forth between the main Power Rangers universe and this dark alternate universe. And for the most part, it kind of seems to be a defeat on both sides. Sides, right? That you ended up having in the main Power Rangers universe, you had like Trini and you had Jason and you had Zach and all those guys, Kimberly and them, the ones that didn't get pulled away into the alternate universe, basically everybody except for Billy and Tommy, who have basically been defeated by Rita and her army of Goldars. And then in this alternate universe, Billy's basically surrendering to Lord Draken, which is kind of nuts. But then suddenly you kind of get this realization, both of which come from Trini. And that's one of the funny things that kind of goes on here with the Power Rangers story. And really it was something that was always intriguing with the show. And I felt like they never really developed it, right? I mean, I guess when you look at the show, like the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Billy was the brain and like Trini was kind of where Billy was, but not really. And they never really seemed to push the limits of what Trini was really capable of, at least if I can remember correctly, right? It's been 20 years since I watched the show. But basically in this instance, there's a couple things that Trini realizes. First and foremost, in this alternate reality, she basically realizes that with a with a morpher in her possession and being close to Lord Draken, that Lord Draken's ability to kind of warp and destroy distort the powers of people around him basically emanates from his access to the Morphin Grid, right? The, the Morph Shield generators as they're called. And so being able to have a Morpher so close would allow them to basically interact with the power of Lord Draken. The other part of this is that in this, in the, the main Power Rangers universe, that Trini had been analyzing the Black Dragon as it was possessed by Lord Draken and as it had been modified by him. And so with both of these versions of herself in these two different realities, the one in the dark alternate universe actually uses her Morpher to basically disrupt the power of Lord Draken and his forces to essentially render them powerless, right? To strip them of their abilities. And then in the main Power Rangers universe, she actually seizes control of the Black Dragon as it was possessed by Lord Draken and then literally just like brings it on herself. She just reprogrammed the whole thing and then in turn just like launches an attack against Rita Repulsa, which is crazy, right? Because, you know, using that and using the, the power ring of Billy, she's able to use the dragon to tap into the Morphin Grid, which they previously weren't able to do, and to restore the rest of the Power Rangers to their normal power. So they don't have to use the, the green Power Ranger coin to use their abilities. And so now you've basically got these Power Rangers here back to the status quo. And you've got Lord Draken rendered powerless in his universe. Now with the Power Rangers regaining their abilities, it basically allows them to reform the Megazord. And that's when it all pops off, right? That's when it all comes crashing down. Because with the Megazord basically being here now, there's really nothing Rita can do. And it's kind of funny because Trini says like, if you really think you're that tough, then challenge me right here, right now. And the response of Rita is no, like we'll do that at a different point in time, right? So Rita basically ultimately ends up bailing out. And then you've got like all these giant Goldars that are basically being crushed by the Dragon Zord while Goldar Prime looks on. Now, for those of you guys who are a little unfamiliar with this, right, kind of playing catch up here, the whole idea behind this was that Rita basically used Goldar as a template in the same way that they create monsters, Finster creates the putties, different things like that. They basically created an army of Goldars, all of which are basically being destroyed by this, by the, the Megazord of the Power Rangers. Now, one of these Goldar duplicates is kind of hanging around Goldar Prime and sort of makes this offhand a remark of like, you know, man, like you're getting all pissed off about losing. No wonder Rita wanted to get rid of you, right? Like Mr. Sensitive over here. And like that duplicate of Goldar gets killed by Goldar Prime, right? So now we're just back to there being one Goldar again. And then following that kind of transitioning back to this, this sort of alternate universe, you basically end up having like Lord Drac and this alternate version of Tommy who's completely rendered powerless. But the, the, the fight and the battle is not over because there were reinforcements out there that were outside this impact zone, right? So they still have access to the Morphin Grid and they still have their various powers. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really make much of a difference. And so what you end up getting is this kind of knockdown drag out fight between Tommy Oliver from the main Power Rangers universe and Tommy Oliver from this alternate reality. Now, here's the funny thing about this, right? Lord Draken, alternate Tommy, whatever you want to call him, he basically represents the worst possible scenario for Tommy Oliver from the main Power Rangers universe. And that's one of the things that we've kind of been hitting on. When Tommy first showed up in the, the Power Rangers mythos, he was a loner, right? He was just kind of doing his own thing. Didn't really have any friends, kind of existed in isolation. The big change for him came after he became the Green Ranger and was essentially hoodwinked by Rita that he actually ended up allying himself with the Power Rangers. One of the things we've talked about is that for Lord Draken, that didn't happen. That he basically stayed with Rita even after her influence was over. And so that's what led to him basically conquering this entirety of the world. These are two opposing dichotomies, hope versus hopelessness. 
friendship versus isolation, right? It's the internal struggle that every single one of us deal with on a regular basis, right? The feeling that things are never going to get better. This is the life we're going to lead forever, right? I mean, I don't want, I don't want to get, you know, too philosophical here, but like for a lot of you guys out there, you know, to kind of make this more tangible and more real, you work like two or three jobs, right? And there's no end in sight. And every day you wake up and you feel exactly like you did the day before, where you dread the day that's, that, you know, dread how things are going to unfold and you go to your jobs and you perform your tasks and then you go home and you sleep and you wish to God that it would just end, right? That's Lord Draken. That's what he imbues, the philosophy he holds. This almost kind of hopelessness that things are never going to get better. Things are never really going to change. Tommy Oliver from the main Power Rangers universe reflects the idea that things can get better, that things can change. And that's what ultimately allows him to get the upper hand on Lord Draken because that desire for hope, that belief that things can improve, that's what changes the world, right? Doing things changes things. Doing nothing keeps things exactly as they are. And while he may have conquered the world and helped Rita pull all those things off, at the end of the day, Lord Draken basically did nothing. He stayed exactly who he was. He never changed. He never became better. He never looked at the possibilities that the world could become a better place, that his life is a loner, never having any friends, but that could never improve, right? He was just, this is the life that I have. This is the life that I live. I'm going to be this way forever and nothing's ever going to get better from here, right? That's how he perceived himself and how he perceived the world. Tommy perceives it as things can get better. Things can improve. And that's why he gets the upper hand here. That and the fact that he just seems to be a better fighter. <laughs> you know, and so the result of this is that Tommy Oliver gets the upper hand, but you also end up seeing the other Power Rangers coming in from the main Power Rangers universe because Trini was able to use the Black Dragon to basically open a dimensional portal and then jump over, right? Which is cool because it basically reaffirms the argument that Tommy, for the, you know, that, that good Tommy was making in saying that like, you know, where, where Lord Draken says like, your friends will inevitably let you down. They will always let you down. If given the chance, while it hasn't happened now, it will happen eventually. But good Tommy's perspective here is, well, I mean, they may not be here right now, but they're still a source of comfort because I know that they trust me. And while there will be times when I may be disappointed, there will be times when I will need them and they may not be there. That's a momentary thing. Now, I guess if it happens constantly, then sure, you know, Lord Draken was correct. But one failure does not mean a life of failure. It simply just means one failure. You know, it's like a buddy of mine, Raj, once said, I love to fail. It's the only way that you learn and it's the only way you get better. And that's true, right? People, people with this fear of failure, that's really what leads you to, it really keeps you from becoming better. The fear of failure is what holds you back, right? And so it's one of the cool things here because it's really as much of a tangible physical representation that Tommy was right as it is him just believing in himself. And so ultimately Lord Draken's just kind of like, well, whatever, man, if, if this is this is the day, that's fine, right? I, I lose this battle. I lose this, this bit of a conflict here, but it's only one day and ultimately just jumps off, right? Just jumps away. And it's one of these funny things because it's a little ambiguous. We don't really know what he meant by that, right? That maybe it's like, this is only one instance. Your friends have proved me wrong this one time, but in the future, they will prove me right. We don't know if it's something that on the nose and that literal, or if it's, it's only one day. And over time, you will become me, right? Whether it's because you encounter alternate versions of me or any number of things, but you will ultimately end up becoming me, right? This dark, twisted version of yourself. Regardless, Lord Draken effectively jumps to his death. And so following that, like, everybody retreats, right? They all basically bail out, they get out of there. There's a couple of, of little moments between the various Power Rangers, right? Where they kind of talk to their alternate reality counterparts. As we know, Zack in the main Power Rangers universe was approached by Rita at some point in time to actually ally to her side. He never told the other Power Rangers and his alternate reality version tells him, tell your friends, right? They'll understand and, and you need to be open with your friends. You need to let your friends know what's going on with you. And that's one of the things that really made the Power Rangers so interesting. The Power Rangers imbued this idea that when it comes to friends there really isn't any holding back. In order to really have a close, true relationship with a person, you have to absolutely let them see you for who you are. Not who you want them to see you as, but for who you are. In your most vulnerable, in your most weak, let them see that person. And then in turn, you'll grow stronger. Now, it is entirely possible they could rebuke Zach, right? If Zach comes out and says, hey, so like Rita made me a deal and they're like, no, you're evil, get out of here, right? And they kick him out of the Power Rangers. It would be crushing, sure, and it would be devastating. But that's the price you pay for that human connection. It's just the nature of things. And so ultimately everybody just kind of teleports back to their, to the main Power Rangers universe, right? The command center is still in shambles, right? The whole place is still just totally trashed. And so they're kind of like, okay, well, we got to clean this up and that's going to suck. <laughs> that's going to totally blow balls. Here's the funny thing though. They're not the only one who was teleported back. You actually end up finding out here that Lord Draken is one of the people who was yanked back here, presumably because of his connection to his Black Dragon Zord and the idea that the Zord was used to open the portal. And so his part and partial connection basically ended up bringing him along 
along. So now Lord Draken, this alternate evil version of Tommy is in the main Power Rangers universe. Question you have to ask is what comes of him? But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this to an end. Thank you guys for watching and I will catch you all later. Peace.